I expect a raise, boss. How about that? My my reputation must precede me. We people were jumping out of here like rats off a sinking ship. <laughs> So you heard it with me, but, uh, <laughs> and some of my students are still here. Some, some have been wise enough to leave. I uh, uh, let me tell you. Let me give you some background, and then we'll talk about some case studies and, and just give you some perspective. I have learned entrepreneurship as a CPA. I worked for 26 and a half years. Somebody, somebody's got good judgment here. Someone's fist pumping. I worked for 26 and a half years for a large international CPA fund called Arthur Anderson. Extra credit if you can tell me what happened to Arthur Anderson. They went down. That's a very kind way to say it. We, uh, yeah, uh, they, they, because of the Enron scandal, that firm essentially evaporated. Um, and that's another story for another day. But uh, I was a partner in at Mark Anderson. I worked for 26 and a half years in our small business division. And we specialized in working with small companies and nurturing them, helping them along the way, being a professional advisor for them. Uh, and, and we would help them through the, the whole process. We would meet them in their garage when they were just developing this disruptive, startling new technology. We had helped them with uh, angel and venture capital. Help them grow and do an IPO. What's an IPO? Initially public offering. Initial public offering. When, you're, when they're on this uh, growth curve, there are large amounts of capital needed when they're on that growth curve. And, and then we help them beyond that. Okay? So we grew up with them and we, we helped them along the way. Fascinating process uh, to find these people that adventure practice flash out to in one of them. So, could you talk about why people take money? What, why? So why? Yeah. Why are they taking money? Why, why the IPO? Why the venture? Okay. Well, here you're in your garage and you have this startling new technology. It's one thing to prove it to yourself. It's quite another then to put it into beta form, product form, and and peddle it to the markets out there. And what happens between here and here is a big deal. You need development dollars, you need to get people on board. You need to spend money for what I call the three P's of a successful business. Product. That includes my analysis of the market and my first customer. Product. Tell, uh, answers the question, what am I doing to solve a problem or uh, fill a need? So this is also a market. Okay. People. And financing spelled my way. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll remember it, won't you? Okay. Uh, you can also call the call it the three M's: management and money. But having the right amount of cash at the right time along your development path is absolutely critical. I'm not sure I've answered your question, but there are some real critical needs as you progress uh, as a as a fledgling company. I had, a, I had a client called Tannen Corporation. And at the time that they, they uh, started, they were creating a way to make the read, write, and erase heads on disk drives 
in mass production at a very low price. They actually went into the market intending to blow it up because they were going to offer disk drives at a much reduced price compared to what the market was paying for. That little company went from zero to over 500 million in annual sales in less than five years. So think about that and think about that track. Zero to 500 million. And what it, what it would take to, to support that pipeline and have that kind of a, a expansion. Okay. So what so what happens here is there are critical capital needs, and we were helping these companies connect with venture capitalists and with the right advisor so they can go public to fill the capital need. Okay? How do you how do you fulfill the needs of customers? To make 500 million in sales, what do you, what do you think your balance sheet looks like? Any thoughts about that? Hmm? Equipment and I'm going to have a lot more. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot more inventory. Yeah. Right, a lot more people, yeah. and so and all of that drives costs, doesn't it? And requires cash. So I'm going to say you're going to have a whole lot of debt or a whole lot of equity. Yeah. And you've got to fund that. And if you don't have the right amount of money at the right time, you're not in business. Okay. So that's that's a process that we have. I I uh, I guess I would summarize the success of the companies that I dealt with. In, in three ways. One, their product was dynamic. It filled a very specific need. Another company that I started with when they were in their garage was a company called Teradig. And they were the first to create uh, terabytes of data storage and data analysis. <clears throat> they ended up selling that company for $540 million to NCR, the old cash for people. It was part of NCR for a few years and it got spun back off. But they had a product that filled a need, that solved a problem. And that was critical. That was absolutely critical. The next thing that they had, both Tandon and Teradata, that was so important to them was their people. You cannot do this without exceptional people with exceptional skills in the industry and the market you're trying to pursue. I had a, uh, a, a legal buddy, Dick Reardon, who became a, he became a uh, venture capitalist. I got out of a law, law practice that he was in and started a venture capital fund. I think that's a good idea to anybody who would give religion after being a attorney. He was a very successful venture attorney. And I'll tell you what drove his success. He said, I bet, I bet on the jockey, not the horse. What do you think that means? Why was Dick Reardon a very successful? He goes off the um, entrepreneur, not the business idea. He wants to know who's in the saddle, executing the plan, and making things happen. Yeah. So to him, team was the absolute critical source of success. Okay. He loved to see new technologies startling new products, but he wanted to see a team that could execute the plan and make the company successful. So, 
I, I can't overstate these three things as critical, critical elements of success. Let me uh, tell you one story and then uh, we can open it up to questions you may have. But I'll tell you a story about a little company that had developed some pretty remarkable technology for the time. It's really kind of, in fact, I'll explain it to you, but it's really kind of embarrassing that it was even high technology. It was a way for me to network hardware printers, computers, and other things, using outlets. They used the hard wiring that was already in place and could plug something in, a, a, a piece of hardware in that, that had software drivers, and, and I could plug my computer into that outlet over there, and then I could print my the stuff that I wanted printed on a printer down the hall or upstairs or wherever else. That was pretty astounding technology at the time. Now, of course, in a wireless world, that's kind of passe. My point is, that was startling new technology, and they attracted some venture capital money to the tune of about $400,000 so that they could <clears throat> start to sell beta product and confirm that the market wanted their product. They could bring on some new people and start to get this thing to market. The founder of the company was a just a brilliant engineer. Great, great engineering model. He uh, when he got to this phase after that four hundred thousand of venture capital investment. Venture capitalists got involved, and one of the neat things about getting venture capital involved is that you have access to a, an ever-widening network, and you can get people in different industries to come and join you. Uh, you can broker your relationship with venture capitalists to get the people you need to continue to grow. They suggested, they being the venture capitalists, suggested that he get professional management to run the company, and that he focus his time and energies on continuing development of the product and refining the product. Oh, does that sound like a logical plan to you? How would you feel if you were the engineer that started the company? Thumbs up on that. <laughs> I think it's hard for people to let go of control, but if they know that's not their area of expertise, then... That's, that's human nature, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, it would be very hard. It's my baby, right? I started this, I created this technology. Two things that caused that company to fail. One, his failure to step out of the way, have someone professionally manage the development and roll out of the product to the markets and to, uh, well, they didn't adapt to new uh, networking software that came out. They just ignored what was happening in the market and ended up on an island somewhere with, with some technology that got sold to a Japanese company for about a quarter of a million. Okay. It was really painful to watch. It was such a great little company, and yet he wouldn't yield to the need for professional management. And uh, just was stuck in his, his lab, taking his approach to the answer rather than being aware of what was going on. I don't know. What, uh, what come to your minds? Any questions that you have that I can help answer about this process of growing and launching? So my question, when you're talking about like mentors, they said they advise us when to take money, when not to take money. What should we look for people like that we that are willing to invest in a company like, no, I don't really want to work with this guy, or yes. 
I <clears throat> I'll give you my, and I've seen that work very well, having the, the right the venture capitalists and the right people involved. I think for one, you have to look them in the eye and feel comfortable that you can work with them. I think that of every relationship that you create in your network. I think if you're going to hire an attorney, you just don't pick a name. You find somebody that you can trust. That was the role that I was in as their CPA. They wanted somebody who could help hold their hand and help them grow. That's what you want, is somebody that you can trust. There are venture capitalists that uh, specialize, okay? So I would find somebody who knows you, my industry, right? And knows the market that I am trying to capture. They are, they, and that's pretty well known. You go to their website and find out who specializes in everything. Uh, information technology, or biotechnology, and, and other things. And those, I, I think that's that's how I would qualify someone to be my venture capital. I want somebody, it's just like when I hire somebody to come on my team, I want to fill a need, right? And venture capitalists should do that for my company. As should any advisor. I don't know whether they're writing me a check or not. I may be writing them a check, right? Attorneys, accountants, bankers, insurance people. That's all part of my network. I, if I could give you any encouragement, I would encourage you to begin to build a network right now. It's almost too late. You need to, you need, you need to get started right now. Building a network that you can draw upon and you can build upon when you start the company. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's fine. Um, so I'm wondering, so you were handling angels and venture capital investments. You were handling angel. I was accounting for them. Accounting for them. Okay. Yeah. No. See, I was just brokering that service. I was helping people to connect with the right source. Oh. Okay. So uh, when you would be looking at business models or products, what were some of the, the buzzwords or the things that got you going when you looked at a product and thought this is my Or and what are some of the graces too when you saw any weakness and from from the person to the this product or plan? Everything that looked like it was disruptive technology <clears throat> that would serve a huge market that gets that gets buzz going for accountants as well as venture capitalists. Okay? So it was market and prospective market that, that really got people to, to sign up. Okay? If I if I've got a new let's let, let's let's uh, let's take an example. I've got a new concept for a pizza place. What's your initial reaction to that? Pretty noisy, cluttered industry, isn't it? So you're not in. But what happens if I'm delivering using drones? I just let my imagination run wild. But my point is, it, it's got to be, it's got to have sizzle, I guess, for lack of a better. So I'm not sure that pizza drone drone delivery is will ever take off. Gosh, ten years from now I will be doing very long. <laughs> but but my point is, it really has to be a a significant market with a significant upside, right, and scalability for my product to move in. Did I answer your question? Yeah, totally. Okay. So we always want to think that we're the best thing for our company because it's like a part of us that we can come out to the world. But there are usually companies that are hindered by their entrepreneur 
at what point? Like in my example, yeah. Yeah, so what would you say is the point where it's best for them to step aside? No, there's no check the box answer to that. Uh, they, uh, they need to listen to people who've been there, done that, and know when to pull the trigger to step aside. In the, in the case of that little company with the networking product, if that uh, CEO would have become CTO, Chief Technology Officer, or COO, or EIEIO, <laughs> If if he were if he would have stepped aside uh, when those who were casting him venture capital, uh, I think that the company could have been successful and could have morphed into something that would have led the way on that road. Really. So, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I'm kind of going down his place, but what would you say would be? Um, I want to say the proper way of about going about, say like, you know, I am an entrepreneur and I have an invention and I'd like to push that out into the market. However, um, now that I've gone through the different pro professional ladders to try and figure out what I need to do as far as get this out there, I've come to the conclusion that I can no longer do a certain portion of this, but I do have a vision. And um, what happens if where the, the people that I'm in contact with have a separate vision for my product, but it will make the product successful. Do you think as an entrepreneur it would be smart for me to let that vision go that way or kind of step in and say, hey, you know, this is what I see, this is what I'd like to see? Don't be so set in your ways that you won't pivot, okay? You may have an incredible technology, but it has applications beyond what you thought of or different than what you thought of. Don't ever close that door. Don't ever and do not allow yourself to pivot and go a different direction. I, uh, I, don't, I don't have a good guide for that. Because it's your vision. And I would hate for you to uh, take a direction that is so different that you really don't have a passion for it. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You've got, you've got to have... The entrepreneur, the founder, has to have the vision and be the driving force. And uh, if you get too far away from that, find people you trust. And if they're telling you, hey, that's a good pivot point or that's a good direction, consider it, right? And don't, like I say, don't be so stuck in your, in your approach that you can't allow other approaches. I need, to, I need to put in a plug for the Small Business Development Center. We're part of SUU. That's my full-time job. Well, I have, I have a lot of different bosses. I do a lot of different things. But we're down at 800 South 510 West, uh, behind uh, the old Southwest Fly Technology College campus. We have offices, and we are part of SUU's outreach to the community. And we have a business resource center, and the, and the crown jewel of that business resource center is a small business development center. And we are very happy to sit down with you and see where you're headed and uh, help connect you with, with the right people to talk through your business concept and uh, see if we can help these entrepreneurs get off the ground and get to the launch. So that's my question. Yes, possibly to your cases. We have some people that are in incubation. Yeah. There. Yeah, we do have some awesome opportunities for you to, to get things started at a, at a very low cost. So, and, and we can support your efforts in incubation. What does incubation mean? Have you ever seen baby chicks in an incubator? Yeah. <laughs> it's essentially that. We are taking a very early stage entity and helping to incubate it and grow it, and then we kick it out of the nest. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use those terms. Right.
but, but, that's, but that's the idea of an invention, is to provide a, a place and, uh, and services that will help people while they don't have a lot of resources and while they don't have a lot of resources. Hey, did I answer your question? Okay, so that's, that's our answer. Hey, you had enough of me?